I work with people, the more I realize that um, obviously there's no one way of doing things. Although you only represent one way at a time. So if you go to one teacher and they have one way, and then you go to another teacher and they have another way. And sometimes, um, as players as well, um, you go and you know one plays really well and they do something with their right arm, and somebody else plays really well as well and they do something else with their you know right arm, and you kind of ask yourself, well, what's the right way? And so there is no right way, and I think we all kind of realize that. But I think that I should say from the word, uh, word go that if I'm saying something and you're doing it differently, it doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. It means I could actually enforce the fact that you're doing it right by saying do it differently, if it makes any sense at all what I just said. I hope so. Um, also, what's interesting to me, and I think it's, it's just uh, human nature, I'm sure that on this tomorrow, on my second lecture about stage fright, there will be more people. Because, um, you know, people want to, to, to know the secret of, 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 of stage fright. And, um, but for me, the interesting, or let's say the bottom line, and so I can save yourself, you coming to the second lecture, is that, <laughs> that um, um, although there is a psycholog psychological part to stage fright, the, the cure, there's also um, a technical part. If you really know what you're doing with your arms, if you really know what you're doing with your breathing, if you really know how everything works, once you get into trouble because of anxiety, because of a psychological trauma, or because of the situation, you can on the spot cure it better. So if you know what, what is going on, um, you have a better chance of overcoming being scared because we all get scared on stage. It doesn't matter who we are, we all get anxiety, everyone, and you, will, you I'm sure, as uh, orchestra members, you play with some magnificent um, artists who have failed in one place or another to a memory loss or to uh, some kind of a missed here, missed there things because of anxiety. We're human beings, and that's how that's how you know that that's how we react when we have to perform. But the ones that overcome it and overcome it quickly, quicker, uh, are the ones who I think have a very good knowledge of how their body works and what works for them. So this is my right hand technique lecture, my left hand te technique uh, lecture will be about the most fundamental things. And it is not because, and it's really interesting actually for me to, to talk to professionals um, as well as some students because this is the first time I'm actually talking about that to, to people who have professional lives. I usually, this lecture I tweet it a little bit, but usually what I do is I talk to students and I give it to students. But it's really interesting to get your input if you have different questions or if you, you know, if you have different views, I would be very happy to, to hear them. Um, so, the, I would like to speak today about the, the, the right arm, or the, right, the right side at the bow arm. Um, and so I will start with the most basic of um, explanation of how each part of what we have four parts in our bow arm and what do we do with each of those parts. Um, the first thing is, is of course the, the fingers. We use the fingers mainly to hold the bow. And we can hold the bow in, in a variety of ways. But for me, um, what is important, one of those kind of rules I give myself, is that from the middle of the bow downwards to the frosh, I try to hold the bow with all of my fingers around. Um, the reason is because I think if you imagine the fingers as knees, it makes sense. If even one of the fingers is straight, and you, you know, and you bouncing the bow, or you know, you put some weight on the bow. If even one of the fingers, that I can, I can be completely round here, but if the thumb is straight, then I'm actually not flexible. My hand becomes rigid. And um, so, when the next time you practice, um, try to hold the bow and try to also hold the bow in different varieties of strength. Like if you are holding it like really strong and then just completely flop it, which is obviously also one of the things that sometimes we do. We're kind of like, oh, we shouldn't touch the bow. We kind of almost drop it. 
you know, and then try to figure out how many ways, what can you do? Give it a number, like let's say this is zero, and let's say this is 10, and then do a seven and an eight on demand. And it gives you, gives you a good feeling. This is actually a very good exercise to give you a good feeling of, of control of that part of the boat, just how, how do we glue ourselves. And no matter what you do, you can lift the fingers when you go up to the, some people have to lift, some people have to move. When you reach the middle, go back to being round and try to be round the entire way. Now when I'm saying round, I don't mean round and like oh, really flat. I call this half mast. So it's not fully and it's not down, it's just right there. So it's, it's as if I'm standing like this and I'm ready to move up and down. And I think that is, though this is very, very important to start with because this is our, those, those fingers are kind of the springs. And whatever we do, we actually apply force, weight or movement. And the more you are flexible in this part of the bow, the better I think one feels. Um, the, uh, so the first, um, of course, the first thing that the fingers do really are holding it, re receiving the weight, and then at, they're also, in the end of movements, or part of the movements, we also move the fingers side to side. But it's not, let's say, this is not the main concern of the, of the fingers, but it's something that we actually do. It's like throwing a ball, and in the end, you snap the fingers, Sometimes before and after we do that as well. So being able to move the fingers as part of the movement or just by itself. There's a what you call collet. It's a French named after collet, which is a just to do just to move from the fingers. Doesn't create the best sound, but it gives that kind of edge that we sometimes 